Hello everyone and welcome to this week's game development log video diary and this week I've been back working on the combat system and I implemented item drops for mobs. Firstly this week I had to implement dying into the game so now when a player or mob goes below zero health they carry out a dying animation and then they're dead and can't move or be attacked anymore as you would expect. So I did this for both the skeleton and the fox mobs and I also added a new damage animation for the fox as well. The mobs also respawn after a certain amount of time, but right now it's mainly for my sake so that I don't have to restart the server every time I want the mobs to come back to life, so at the moment they just respawn in the exact location that they died. Of course, I also had to add support for all of this into the entity editor, so the health component now requires you to choose a death animation for the mob, which can be previewed by pressing this button here. Also this week I did a lot of work on mob item drops, so now when you kill a mob you'll see that the crosshair goes red when it's over the dead mob, indicating that it can be clicked on, and when you click on the mob it opens up this interface here showing all of the items that the mob dropped. Then of course you can loot all of these items as long as you have enough space in your inventory. The item drop is generated from various item groups. So for each mob I can set any number of item groups and then I can add any number of items to each of these groups. Then when the loot is generated for that mob it selects one item from each of the groups. Each item also has its own probability of being selected from its group so some items will be chosen more than others. Each group also has a chance of returning no item at all, although that probability can be set to zero if I want an item to always be selected from that group. In the entity editor I can actually set all of the item groups for a mob by using the new container component that I added this week. Here I can add, edit and remove item groups, and by editing an item group I can add, remove and edit the items in that group. So I'll add a new drop to this particular item group and I'm going to choose it to be the wizard hat. So now I can choose the probability of the wizard hat being chosen from this group and I can also set the base tier for the hat which will determine what kind of material it's made out of. So I've chosen tier 4 here but it will still have a small chance of being a higher or lower tier when it's actually dropped. For stackable items like the health potion there are two extra settings which determine how many of the item will be in the drop if this item gets chosen. The count setting is the average number of health potions that would be dropped, and this other setting is the standard deviation, which determines how random the count number will be. The lower the standard deviation, the more likely it is that the actual number of potions dropped will be close to this average number. So I've created these item groups here for the fox mob, so an example drop for a fox would be something like this perhaps. So in the game now I'm going to go around killing a whole load of foxes to see what kind of loot I get. The way that looting actually works is that whenever a mob is killed, the server generates the drop for that mob using the item groups, and it then sends a message to the client indicating that the mob can now be looted. When the client clicks on the mob to loot it, it sends a request to the server, and the server replies with a list of all of the items in the drop, which the client can then display on the screen. The client then clicks on an item to loot it, which sends another message to the server telling it to remove that item from the container. You might also have noticed that when a mob is killed I automatically get some money as a reward, which is shown in the top left corner under the player's profile. And the average amount and standard deviation of this reward of course depends on the mob. So my inventory is now full of fox loot, and I've gained a little bit of money just from the cash drops, so I can now sell all of these items at the local shop. So after all that I ended up making 435,000 and that was without even selling the chest plates or the potions because I couldn't remember where in the world I'd put the potion or armor shops. So perhaps the system still needs a little bit of balancing. So that is it for this week. Next week I'm going to be adding a very nice new feature to the combat system which will make a big difference to the system but it also shouldn't be too hard to implement so that will be lovely. You can of course see updates of that during the week on any of my social media pages, all of the links are in the description below, but yeah thank you guys very much for watching this video, do subscribe if you haven't already, have an amazing week and I will see you all next time.